Chief Dele has been celebrated across Africa for many reasons. He has many claims to fame, jack of all trades, and he has proven to be master of all. It's fine to have the kind of career or job that allows you to meet people. But in your life, how do you meet these people and by default allow them never to forget you? Uh, I think the way to put it is that charisma most times is inbuilt. I mean, from Chief Akiyomo Buriwo to the owner of Ife the King uh, to Chief MK Wabiola, I mean, that was the most charismatic man I ever met. I found my way to London in 1995 as a refugee on the run from the military government in Nigeria. This same radicalism from it, university. Exactly. <laughs> First, I was detained by the Babangida government. Mm -hmm. Then I was forced into exile by the Apache government. And uh, I escaped through the bush into Kotonou, from Kotonou to Lome, and from Lome to Accra. That was my first time ever in Accra. When Ovation first came out, what, if you remember, was the initial reception? What did people think of this magazine? It, it was incredible. From day one, I knew it was bound to explode. Boom! A bomb exploded next door. I started running, Abacha, Abacha, I thought the military <laughs> dictator was after my life. And we were able to come back in the following week. And that, to me, was the first sign. We got an exclusive interview with Seal's sister in Nigeria. A lot of people didn't know Seal, Seal was, was Nigeria. from Nigeria. Nobody knew. The mom was alive in Nigeria, living in Nigeria, in Lagos. We got calls from the National Enquirer in America. National Enquirer was doing 4 million copies a week. And they requested for the copyright. When the Queen was coming, we had applied to the Nigerian government to give us all access. They, they refused. And you won't believe it, I was in a salon in Joru when my phone rang. And the person on the other line was a white guy. He said, hello, Mr. Momodo. I said, hello, good afternoon. He said, I'm the Deputy British High Commissioner to Nigeria. I said, oh, how are you, sir? He said, I have instructions from Buckingham Palace to choose your magazine as the official magazine for Her Majesty's visit. It was a miracle. I've never seen such a thing. You won't believe it. Now, I know you've also started Ovation Restaurant. You are going to take me there. But do you cook? Oh, that's my first love. I wanted the place very close to the airport. Five, ten minutes. So you come and eat your airbag and then off you go. Or you can check in, come back here and relax till your flight. When you look at how well House of Ovation is doing, do you immediately think of it think of it as okay, it's doing well now, I need to start the next business venture, I need to look for the next business opportunity? Oh, we're already doing something in the direction of Ovation Television. Ah <laughs> I see. So yes. you're trying to own oh, the continent. It, Politics. Is that something that you hold very close to your heart? Oh yeah, from the beginning, right from 1982 that I've been in it. It never occurred to me that I would contest one day. I'd always been like the engine room uh, behind the scene. I'm like a producer, like a John Jazzy behind the band. <laughs> Everything about my life, like I told you, is spiritual. Yeah. When I was born, people told my mom she was too old mm. to get pregnant. And when she got pregnant, she said she would lose it. But there were also prophecies. I was born in a church, the house of the Lord. And there were prophecies told my mom that this child would be very famous. When you think of the successes that you've enjoyed, the successes you want to enjoy, what keeps you up at night? I want to be successful in this and that. What do I need to do? What are these thoughts that keep you up at night? It is the fact that to get to the top is very easy, but to stay on top is a lot more difficult.